there seems to be no simple definition for superconductivity. Rather, we deal here with a complex group of phenomena. This 22nd Magnet Technology Conference celebrates the 100th anniversary of the discovery of superconductivity and the 50th anniversary of applied superconductivity, a discovery that has triggered a kaleidoscope of technologies, from the MRI machines that allow for non-invasive examination of the human body and high-energy particle physics, to the manufacturing of powerful, high-current superconducting magnets that will contain, shape and drive plasmas in fusion devices such as ITER. Let us invite you to a short tour illustrating the history, the present and the future developments in superconductivity. Two thousand eleven is a very important year for superconductivity. Since uh, uh, one century ago, the Dutch uh, scientist Eike uh, Kamelin Honnes discovered superconductivity, April eight, uh, nineteen eleven. He discovered that the resistivity of uh, mercury disappeared completely under four point two Kelvin. He earned the Nobel Prize uh, two years later in nineteen thirteen and it was the first of a long list uh, of Nobel Prize uh, applied to superconductivity. Eike Kamerlin Honnes immediately imagined uh, the main application of superconductivity, that's to say, to produce uh, high magnetic flux density with low power consumption, like uh, in this superconducting magnet. So right uh, in 1913, he made the first superconducting magnet, uh, but he failed uh, since uh, a small magnetic flux density destroys superconductivity, its superconducting magnet became uh, resistive. We have to wait uh, up to the 50s uh, to overcome this problem with a type 2 superconductor which uh, withstand a uh, high magnetic uh, field. The Russian works uh, about superconductivity were not uh, known, uh, well known uh, in the West due to the Cold War, so Abrikosov uh, earned his uh, Nobel Prize only in 2003. Type II superconductors uh, were elaborated at the end of the 50s uh, and opening the way for applied superconductivity. I am Lucio Rossi. I've been responsible for the construction of this superconductive magnet of the LEC. It took more than 20 years to design and to build and manufacture and install the LEC. But it took 35 years of development of superconductivity. In fact, here is the summit of a gen full generation of scientists. Started with Tevatron in Fermilab in the US, the first large superconducting accelerator based on superconducting magnet. Then there was the time of Hera in Hamburg in Desi. Then the RIC, the Relativistic high Heavy Ion Collider in Brookhaven, in Long Island. And finally the LEC. LEC has been really the summit of this development, all based on niobium titanium. And thanks to this, we can reach magnetic field in excess of 8 Tesla in such a big machine. You have to imagine that we have 40,000 tons of coal mass in the LEC, all cooled with superfluid helium. In fact, the superfluid helium is inside this blue tube, it percolates inside the coil and gives us a boost of one, one and a half Tesla more. And that's why LEC is so powerful. But this is not the end of the story. Powerful as it is the LEC, we are already working for the future. We are working to go beyond the LEC, to go beyond our limit of today. In fact, today, in just today at CERN, we are testing a small magnet like this, half a meter long, but it's a magnet for 11 Tesla a magnet that will become a real LAC magnet in 10 years from now. And in 10 years from now, thanks to niobium tritine, this new advanced material that is used also for ITER in, in another uh, uh, magnet, we think to improve the luminosity of the LAC. So beautiful as it is, this machine is not the end of the story. A 
I am very glad to be today coming back to a place where 35 years ago I started to build an experiment which is called Tor Supra. And this experiment was quite an innovation. The main problem at that time was going from small experiment to larger one. And the problem when you go to larger, larger scale was you need a lot of power to build and, and, and supply the energy on, on copper coils, which was used at that time. That's why we came to the idea that we should take the first step and make a tokamak with superconducting windings. Fusion development will need much larger device than just our Supra. And that was, at the time, starting around 1995, was to look for an ex <coughs> a device which will, now it's called ITER, which will be very much larger than Tor Supra, but for which the confidence which is built for Tor Supra and Tor Supra operation during now 25 years will give confidence that really we could rely on this technology to build something as large as ITER. You see that having built for ITER all superconducting magnet for the toroidal field coils and the central solenoid with nobium tin and for the outside toroidal field coils with nobium titanium, I think everybody will be confident that the magnets are no more an issue for the future. Everyone should be confident that the results of ITER will be transferred to the next machine without any difficulty. Hello, I'm Denis Lebihan. I'm the director of Neurospin, a facility dedicated to brain imaging. MRI was invented in the early 70s. At the beginning, the field strength which was used to produce images of the brain was very low. And uh, we could use at the time permanent magnets or resistive magnets. But very soon, people realized that to get good signal, so good quality images, we had to use very strong magnetic fields. And only superconducting materials allowed to go to higher field strengths. So in the 80s, um, people started to use nobium titane as the material to make magnets for MRI. And the field at the time was very low, so the first magnets using superconducting materials were working at about 0.5 um, uh, Tesla, about 10,000 times the Earth's field. Today, with uh, new concepts, magnets can reach 11.7 Tesla for humans, 230,000 times the uh, Earth's field. However, we can dream about even further what could be the future magnets for MRI. The problem with MRI today is that we have to use cylinders. It's not comfortable. If you want to understand how the brain works, it's not a natural way. Could we think about shapes of magnets which would be different? Another problem is that for superconductivity to work, the materials today have to be cooled down with liquid helium. This is very expensive. This is also challenging. We hope that with high temperature materials, high temperature superconductivity materials, we can build new magnets, which will be much uh, easier to design and also less expensive to run. We are here at the Institute of Technical Physics at KIT in Karlsruhe and we started the development of superconducting applications with a large coil task for fusion and the ITER 
toroidal field model coil and all this was tested here in the Tosca facility that you see here and from that we developed further on superconducting power application and high field magnet application concentrating on high temperature superconductors. First and major challenge of course is to have the wire, the high temperature superconducting wire available but once you have it there are further challenges. This is the development of a suitable cable and wire concept for the specific application. A cable concept for a transformer is totally different than a cable concept for a fusion magnet with high temperature superconductors. For example, in a transformer you have to go to very high voltages, more than 100 kilovolts, and you have currents in the range of a few kiloamps only and frequencies of 50 hertz, whereas in a fusion magnet you have to go to very high currents, far more than 10 kiloamps with more than 10 tesla and you have a slow ramping usually of the, of the current and this is totally different if, uh, within the specific applications. The most promising material for power applications are the high temperature superconductors and there especially the 2G wire made of YBCO, very thin tapes, is most promising because of the future low cost perspectives that we have and the challenge to develop a wire concept is to have with the thin flat wire uh, AC loss, a low AC loss wire that is for example made of a ribble structure. So a ribble structure is in principle a fully transposed wire. This means that the position of each strand changes within the length to minimize the induced current in case of magnetic fields. So the most important benefit of superconductors in conventional power applications is that because of the high current density the device will be much smaller and more compact and in addition we can reduce the loss of the device so that we have more efficient system. With the new applications like magnetic energy storage and fault current limiters we simply have no conventional counterpart and this enables very promising applications for future smart grids.